Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to today's lesson for computer literacy class. This is Mr. Blumendahl and today we're going to be talking about the basics of using PowerPoint. Moving on from Microsoft Word. Uh, PowerPoint is the main method of creating presentations that we use and it corresponds to using uh, Google Slides. So when you first log on to PowerPoint, you're going to see a screen that looks remarkably like this, and you essentially get to choose what your background is going to look like. Um, you're creating a theme for your presentation. Um, and so for the sake of this particular PowerPoint, I am going to use the frame theme. It's going to give me a choice of color schemes, and I'm going to choose the color scheme that fits what I'm trying to do the best, so I'm going to come right over here, I'm going to click this one. We are now going to create our first slide. So let's take a look across the top here. Uh, on your home tab, the things that you're going to use the most are going to be your layout button. Your layout button is pretty darn important because it decides what kind of layout are you going to have. Are you going to have a title slide? Are you going to have title and content, which looks like this? Are you going to have a section header that looks like this? Are you going to have two types of content that look like this? Are you going to have a comparison, which basically adds titles up here that look like this? Uh, title only, blank, where you can do anything with it, content with a caption, or picture with a caption. So there's all different kinds of layouts that you can use. Um, we're going to start with the most basic. Um, we're going to now call this the PowerPoint Demo. And I am Mr. Blumendahl at Waldo Middle School. Now, not going to lie, um, this is a pretty boring looking intro slide. So let's give it some pop. I'm going to go on to Google Chrome and I'm just going to enter PowerPoint into my search field and I'm going to look up images and look at all my choices here. Which one do I like? I like this one. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to save that link to my desktop as PowerPoint. Actually I don't want that as an HTML document so I'm going to actually go into the page itself and download it straight from here. And there's my logo. I'm going to save that to my desktop. I'm going to go back into PowerPoint and I'm going to do something called insert picture. And then I'm going to go to my desktop. I found that picture right there. I'm going to click insert and there I now have something that jumps. And now notice all these effects across the top I can use. I can add the white lines around it. I can do that. I can do that. I can choose any of these effects going across. I can turn it into an oval. I can do that. That I, I'm thinking I like that one actually. So boom. My intro slide now jumps. So now we're going to go into insert new slide. So uh, let's go ahead and look at these top tabs again. Um, this um, is where you insert things, pictures, screenshots, shapes. All of these things can be inserted across the top. And honestly, I'm not going to teach you about every single one of them, but this is where you can insert objects. Uh, your design, if I wanted to change up my design, I could go across. And as you scroll over them, magically, it will make them look different. So let's go to my original slide here, see what it does. That's what I did originally. There we blank it out. And you'll notice when you change the formatting, it moves your words around in ways that you may or may not like. So then you'll have to reshift those words. So what am I going to do? I'm going to stick with my original. And we'll go from there. All right. So. Um, we are going to go ahead and um, show you how to mess around with this a little bit. So I am going to create a layout slide that has um, a title, 
and two forms of content. Okay, uh, this is going to be an about me slide. I am Mr. Blumendahl, and I'm now going to notice I can stretch these boxes. So you do not have to keep the boxes the same um, as they do it. You can you can stretch them and move them around. So I'm going to go ahead and add some text here. I have been teaching at Waldo Middle School for 12 years. I teach social studies and computer, would it be helpful if Mr. Blumendahl could spell computer literacy. Alright, now those aren't very big so if I want to make them pop I can come up here to my fonts just like Microsoft Word and I can make it as big or as small as I want. Once I find a size that I like, I'm going with 40 here, I do it. Um, I also think Mr. Blumendahl should be centered. Um, and I also think that uh, I would like to be at the top. So notice here, if I'm aligning my text, top, middle, bottom. I want it at the top. Okay, And I also want it centered. So just like Microsoft Word, you can center it. Um, I'm also going to add room 117 because that's normally my room number. Now, um, I would like a picture to accompany this. So I want a picture of Waldo. So I'm going to go to the Waldo Middle School website. And I am going, I just happen to know there's a picture right here. I'm going to download that picture, save it to my desktop, Waldo. It's going to be the title. And then I'm going to go back to PowerPoint. And I'm going to click on this. You can add a picture, a table, a chart, a smart art graphic, which is saved in PowerPoint, a video. That's an important one to know. Or online pictures. So right now I'm inserting a picture. Here is a picture of Waldo. Very nice. Say I want to make that picture bigger. I stretch the edges. Say I want to move that picture up and down. I see all the four of those arrows there. You can move it up and down. Okay. Say I want to tilt the picture. See the circle there? You can tilt the picture. You can make it do a washing machine cycle. Look at that. Okay. And up above, again, I can add effects to the picture that meet my needs or what it is I'm trying to accomplish. Okay, I'm going to turn it into an oval this time. It even creates a shadow down below. How lovely is that? So now I am going to enter a new slide. And let's make this one, and honestly I'm making this up as I go just to show you the different features. Um, we're going to go to home and we're going to make this one under layout a comparison. So now it's given uh, me a chart. I use YouTube videos to teach my classes. Okay. And I'm making one right now, and I'm going to call this YouTube video number one. And say I want that to pop, I highlight it. I can also right click on it, and it'll give me these options. So if I want to blow it up there, I can do that. That looks delicious. I want to underline it, and I want to make it italicized. Look at that. And here, we're going to call this YouTube video number two. I'm going to highlight it. I'm going to right click it. Actually, that pops up automatically. I'm going to do the same thing. Make it just big enough so it fits. I'm going to underline it, and I'm going to make it italicized. Look at that. So now I need to insert the YouTube video. So I'm going to go to my own YouTube channel, which uh, should be known by the Google, which one are we on here? 
please don't pay too much attention to what's showing up there. And here we go. So I'm going to go ahead and log myself in here. And you don't know what my login is. But that's my account. And then I'm going to go to my channel over here. And so yesterday we did a lesson in class called Cyberbullying. Hello. It's right there. I'm going to copy the link for that. I'm going to go back to PowerPoint. And I'm going to go insert video. YouTube. Right there. I'm clicking the link. And I'm going to hit return. And we should be in. Okay, that, that was not doing what it was supposed to, kids. Mr. B does not like that. Uh, from an, uh, probably because I need the video embed code. Okay, so I could search YouTube for a specific video, or if I have the code, which I did, I'm going to paste it there. And that still didn't work. All right, so Mr. Blumendahl is now experiencing frustration in real time. Um, so I'm going to go back to YouTube and actually go to where it says info and settings share I'm going to go to share here is the embed code All right here I'm going to copy that now I'm going to put it in here and see if that does the trick does that do the trick look at that it created a video for me now Notice that video is not the same size. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this up here. I'm going to move this here. And I'm going to shrink it to a size that works. And so now I'm going to go to another video embed code. So let's go choose another one of my YouTube videos. I think it's actually helpful for you to see me struggle with it a little bit in real time because that's reality. Sometimes you have to mess around with things a little bit to make them work. So here I'm going to share. I'm going to get my embed code. I'm going to copy it. Control C. I'm going to go in. I'm going to post it. Actually that's not what I want to do. I'm going to go to right there to the video. Insert my embed code. Push that. Click return. And there's that video. We're going to make them similarly sized. I'm going to move this heading down here. And now I have manipulated the screen to look like I want it to. Now, as I look at this slide, I'm actually finding it to be a little bit on the boring side. So one thing I could do is come up here and Google the word video and see if I find a picture or an icon that is appropriate. So I'm going to go to Images. And look at this. Look at all these videos. So I could uh, choose this icon, um, save that image to my desktop. And what else do I want to use? Let's go ahead and use this one is actually um, a different kind of image. It's a GIF, I believe. So let's see if I can do this. And I'm going to save the image as. And so now that I've done that, I'm going to go back into PowerPoint. And I'm going to click Insert, Picture, Video 1. There's that. I'm going to shrink it. I'm going to pull down on the corner here, shrink it, move it over here. And I'm going to pull down on the corner there, make it a nice size. And I'm going to make it pop a little. Now that doesn't because it overlaps. That's a little boring. Uh, that's kind of boring. You know what? I may just leave it there. We'll go with that one. Put it there. And notice these little lines that pop up. It will actually help you to center it or do what you need to do that way. Now I'm going to insert my other image. And that should be this one. And that one also needs to be shrunk. Now, this is a type of picture that's actually transparent. So the background, it'll show you the dimensions of the picture, but it's also transparent. So you don't need to worry about that too much. And I want it to center, actually. I like the shadow effect at the bottom there. So now I have a slide. 
So now I'm going to go in and I want to have some slide transitions. So I'm going to click slideshow here and where it says slide transitions is what I'm looking for. Uh, animations. There we go. Um, animations are things that the words themselves will do uh, if you program them appropriately. And then we also have transitions. So this is how the slides will transfer. So my favorite transition is usually this push one. Click on that. That's what will happen in between each slide. If I want it to happen to all three of them, I will come up here and I will go select all. Just a second. Let's see if it will let me do that. Home select all. Now I've selected all the slides. I will go to transitions. I will push the push. And that means when each slide advances, it's going to look like that. Now, if I want to have special animations when specific pieces of text show up, I highlight that specific piece of text. I go to animations and I can choose one of these. Uh, I'm going to choose grow and turn. See, it grows and turns, and it was only the part that I highlighted, and this little one here tells me that that's the first thing that's going to pop up. Second thing I'm going to do is going to put grow and turn for this one as well. And that's going to show the two, because that's the second one that's going to pop up. Now, if I wanted one of them to grow and turn and the other one to bounce, I could do that. And you can do the same thing with pictures. If I want the picture to show up as a shape, it will. I think it showed up as a shape. I don't actually like the way. Let's have it float in. There we go. It floats in. And that's coming up third. So those are some basic things you can do with PowerPoint. Um, obviously, there's a lot more you can do with it. But if you at least know how to do this much, um, you're going to be able to perform the first lesson, um, which is going to be to make your own PowerPoint. So. Uh, let's go ahead and look at the PowerPoint and how it actually shows up on the screen when we run through it, and then you're going to have fun making your own. So we're going to go up here, either start from beginning, or you can go to slideshow from beginning or from the current slide. We're going to start it from the beginning. This button right here will accomplish exactly the same task, or you could hit F5. So notice how the slide transitioned in. That's because I created the slide transition that made it kind of come up from the bottom of the screen. Now I'm going to press my, my uh, left uh, mouse key. See, the only thing that's showing up is Mr. Blumendahl in room 17 because I programmed in those animations. So when I left click, the first animation is going to occur. I have been teaching at Waldo Middle School of 12 years. Apparently I need to learn how to spell there because that should say four. That's one of the reasons you go through your PowerPoint because you need to make corrections and sometimes if you do things too fast you make a mistake. So we're going to go back to the beginning. I have now fixed my error. My animation still works and it says I've been teaching at Walden Middle School for 12 years. Now remember I used a different animation for the second one. Boom! I teach social studies and computer literacy. It came in, it was a different animation, and then remember the picture? It just floated in. So all of that I programmed. And then we're going to go to the third slide, and this is actually the one I'm most interested in seeing. I use YouTube videos to teach my classes. Notice how those codes have now showed up. I've got YouTube video number one, I've got YouTube video number two, and if I click on them... Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to today's lesson uh, in computer literacy class. They actually work. If I click on this one... Hello ladies and gentlemen, and well, it actually works. So, you can have some fun with this, um, and I'm going to encourage you to have fun with this. Um, and you can become a PowerPoint expert. Obviously there's a lot more I could teach you in one lesson, but we're reaching a point at this point where it's uh, getting a little bit long, so I think we're going to wrap it up like a big burrito. 
I'm going to get out of the PowerPoint. I'm going to click it off. It's going to ask me if I want to save it. I'm not going to save it, even though it was amazing. I'm going to get out of my Google um, Chrome. I'm going to delete all the pictures because I don't need those anymore. I can empty my recycle bin. And most importantly, the part you look forward to, Mr. B signing off until the next lesson.